Today we're going to be talking about the 12 candle window and the stop hunt patterns. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Tuesday. Yesterday a couple of really good moves in the US session and also uh, pound yen, pound Swiss and the pound all had a fairly good run right out of the gate at the Europe London Open. Today we're going to talk about the 12 candle rule and the trapping patterns. I think there's still a lot of confusion. Uh, I, I received one comment from a gentleman. He, he, he's interested in trying to capture a lot of, a lot of pips from other time frames. And I want to emphasize that what our objectives are, or my objectives are to position myself in the market when I'm either near the high or at the high or near the low or at the low after the stop hunt when the market is about to open for a move either to continue the trend or for a reversal into the existing session from Asia or London in New York whatever that may be for a very fast quick move which tends to be a stop hunt trapping or stopping out traders who may already be in existing profitable trades. So today what I'm going to go through is explaining a couple of the basic trapping patterns, what I look for, where I look for them, and at what times. Very specific, again we talked about the 12 candle window. Part of that is to narrow down your focus to one very specific high probability window of where you may have a fantastic opportunity to position yourself for an asymmetrical risk reward trade. Now again we talk about the high of the day and the low of the day. We talk about timings. I've been very specific about the timings and I'll write these again. 8 to 11 p.m. 2 to 5 a.m. and 8 to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. It doesn't matter what charting package you have. It doesn't matter where you're located on the globe. These are the times. That's the 12 candle window for each session. Now I know online you're going to read stuff that Tokyo opens at 7 and London opens at 8.30 in London and all that stuff. These are the times that I'm going to emphasize to you to focus on the 12 candle rule. That first four candles, if we were to look at each day, each session, whether that's Asia, London, or New York. So for example, Asia may be in a range. And we come to London and we have our 12 candle window. We'll block that into three hours. That first hour, typically, we could be inside of the box somewhere. We could be inside of the high-low. But typically, there will be... Well, let me explain one thing. I talk about having six pairs on my screen. Now, I'm not looking to trade every single move on each pair. What I'm looking to do is position myself either up here to sell or down here to buy, unless it's a trend trade, which is a breakout where we'd already have the market extending out and possibly stop hunting back into the Asian range for a continuation in London. But I want to sell up here and I want to buy down here. Now, Asia could be over here and they might come down into this box in the Europe Open and go back up into the London Open for a measured move down. But in that first four candle window, what I'm looking for is a stop hunt to the high. If I'm going to be trading off the bottom, I want a stop hunt to the low. Now we may already have a low in place, prior or a high, prior to that 12 candle window. So remember what we talked about. Where is the money? The trap is this. They get traders in early chasing a move away from the low. They might go one, two, three up in that first four candles. And then in the open they might go one, two, three down 
and then bang, go 50 pips in four candles. These moves, again, we could have a double bottom. You can call it a W, a double bottom, but it's all about the timings. When these times, that first hour in that 12 candle window, I want to stop hunt to the high or to the low. That is the first thing I need in order to get into the market. Now it might even be, as we saw yesterday, we had on the pound yen, we had one push, two push, and then they went one, two, three, into the end of the hour, and an, an engulfment with the London Open. And then there's our measured move, the high and the low. And that proceeded to go down 100 pips. Then off the bottom of the US session, we saw the market move back into the range, and then in that, that four candle window, again, go back one, two up, one big candle down, and a little bar. That's a stop hunt, one big candle at the low of the session or at the high of the session in that first hour of the 12 candle window is typically a stop hunt. Now again, the most important thing is for you to be able to go back through your charts and identify two or three of the similar setups that you see occurring very specifically at these windows of time. We do get the odd session where they'll do a 50 pip stop hunt in Asia. They've done one this morning on the Pound Aussie. 100 pips from the open right up through 50 pips in the pre-market and then they open the market up high at double zeros. They've done a three push pattern and they're currently sitting up there either to come back down inside of that double zero box or to hit it one more time at the Europe open for a move back down. It's really important though because that narrows your trading window down now to eight candles. Because if it doesn't go in that, they could go in the first, first hour, they could move it back inside, and then at the market open, drag traders down into the open, trapping people chasing the open of the market, and then in the third hour, reverse that for the, for the 50 pip or 100 pip move, and typically that'll be back to, to the London short, or an Asian short if it's London or, or whatever else. So it's really important, again, remember, we talked about marking off where the stops are. And if you stick to these times, very specifically, and knowing that that first hour, the majority of the time is the trap, if it's a blow off on the third leg up to the high at the end of that first hour, and you've taken out previous sessions, highs or lows from the day before. That's the other important thing. If we've taken out a previous day's high or low, you want to be paying attention to how that market is behaving. Is it a stop hunt? Did it go vertical? Or has it been trending? There's a big difference be between coming out of inside of the range in three candles or four candles versus over four or five hours trending and creeping to new highs and then swinging again and making new highs. There's a big difference. One's a trend and one is a stop hunt. So very important. We're going to look at some examples today, but I'm going to encourage you to stop trying to forget about trading every single move the market makes and start identifying two or three really basic patterns, whether they're at the low of the day, at the high of the day, or a trend trade. Those are my three trades. I have a trend trade, I have a high of the day trade, and I have a low of the day trade. And typically, they are only at these times, very specific, and they have to be a stop hunt in that first hour. Those are the best trades because when they take people down on a second leg into a trap, right prior to the equity marketing opens, that means they've got volume trapped down low or up high to be able to shift the market and move it 50 or 100 pips, depending on where that move originated from, heading into that session. So very important. And again, as the market progresses throughout, are we inside of one range or did we drop down 50 pips into another range? Have we moved down 150 pips heading into New York or are we still, did we move back up 50? Just little things because again, remember the average daily range for most of these pairs is, is going to be around 100 to 150 pips on average. And if we're at the high of the week or the low of the week, we can get moves that can be 300 or more pips. So very important, we'll look, we'll look at some very specific examples now. And again, 
pick two or three setups that you, that you can recognize specifically with the timings and the behaviors of how those price patterns will present and then focus on those, look for very specific patterns. If you could only trade when the market came up here or down here and only inside of that 12 candle window, I can guarantee you your trading results will improve. So one of the questions I want you to ask when, this, when the session pre-hour starts, are we up high, are we down low, or are we inside? And then of course if you're up high, you want them to hit the stops one more time, trapping people into the open of the market for the shift. And again, there's a big difference between a breakout and a continuation and a trend trade versus a stop hunt. And we're going to look at some of those examples now. So again, remember, are we up high, down low, or are inside? Stay disciplined, stay focused. Let's look at some examples. Print off your own charts for your own homework and may the markets go with you. Good day, traders. Uh, Stacy Burt from Stacy Burt Trading. Continuing our discussion about the 12 candle window and the stop hunt and market opens. I just am making this video to emphasize a couple of things. Number one, the importance of timing. The 12 candle window, the 8 to 11 p.m., 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., and 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., New York Eastern Standard Time is the 12 candle window and I can tell you with absolute certainty regardless of what equity market other uh, times you may read on the internet or anything else about the Asian market uh, trades from these hours and the Forex market uh, rolls over and these are the most important times you will see why and I'm also going to encourage you to identify two or three setups that you see recurring each and every week two or three times whether it's a reversal trade a trend trade a breakout pullback whatever that may be i basically have three trades a trend trade a low of the day trade and a high of the day trade and the first four candles of the 12 candle window so the first hour i look for a couple of types of stop hunt patterns and they show up all the time. They show up in, in every time frame, not every single session. But my, uh, what I mean by that is that you'll see the same setups showing up over and over again in all sessions, whether it's Asia, London, or New York, whether it's, <clears throat> you can call it a reversal or you can call it a, uh, just a breakout pullback continuation. Uh, but it just so happens to be going against the trend. So again, just some screenshot examples. These are the this this past couple weeks. The first bar, we go pin bar, inside bar, and then bang, they hit the high. This was the BOE day, but we have an anchor point low. So our, our stop on high drop in Asia into consolidation. They stop on high. We have an anchor point. So typically London, uh, the doji is the last candle of the hour and then bang, the London open uh, is an open drive candle back below the double zeros. I will take the high and the low and do a measured move of two times that distance as a profit target. Now again, I may take that off if it's a, a, a 150 pips or whatever, I may follow that closely as it moves through the lower boxes. As it gets later in the session, if it's still trending strongly, um, you know, I may just close it out and go to bed. It doesn't matter, but I just, this is the measuring targets that I will use. Uh, and again, instead of just going for 50 pips in a move like this, we've already dropped 100. You're thinking 100, 100, 100, three 100 pip boxes. So in a trend trade situation, again, the first hour, one, two down, and then bang, they go back up with a big candle, a stop hunt candle, and a little doji. That's our anchor point low again for a measuring target. A pin hammer engulfment back in line with the trend at the market open. So the first hour again is the stop hunt. First hour is the stop hunt. Okay? Pin hammer engulfment back with the trend. So often people think, oh, you know, you're, you're going to try and counter trend all the time. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about reading the price action and then waiting for the market to reveal their hand. Stop on high 
with a pin hammer at the high. If they were going to fail down here, okay, and reverse, we're going to be at break even as soon as they hit the low. But it follows through with our original trade thesis of trend trading. And then you have your measuring target for, again, if you're watching the three levels of drop, it could be 100, you might trail it down, it goes sideways, so you exit the trade. But this tip, this is a typical pattern for a trend trade stop hunt in the first hour. <clears throat> Another example, this was yesterday on the GY. Um, so the market pushed up, came back down in Asia. They hit the highs again and came back down into the first hour of the Europe London Open. One, two, and then bang to the high one, two. We have an anchor point low and a pin hammer at the high after one push, two push, three pushes. And there were stops to the left from a couple weeks ago. They cleared those out. It's a one bar stop. The market on the open uh, London market, boom, back inside sideways and continuation. And again, another measured move on a larger range. I will target one times in the box. So uh, in this particular case, it's a 50 pip box. So I, it's a 100 pip target. But again, the first hour, one, two, three to the high pin hammer. And again, um, this is another example down low. I'm going to use a different example for last night's setup, but they've brought that down, consolidated at the numbers, but again, one, two, stop hunt high, one, two, stop hunt low inside bar. So again, breakout pullback at the US Open in the pre-market. Stop hunt high, stop hunt low, inside bar, 50 pips back up to short to stop out the traders who were short from the original move down so again just these happen all the time but it's very very specific about the timings this first hour is a trap stop hunt and a trap dragging traders back with the trend not not letting traders who were short out of the move by not hitting the lows and then an inside bar and the reversal trapping uh, trap volume down low and then shifting the market. Another example yesterday on the pound Swiss, just another example of, of three pushes, one push, two push, stop hunting low, and then into the pre-market for London, uh, hitting the high one more time with an anchor point low, one, two, sideways, three up to the high, and then engulfment at the London Open, dropping it down, and then consolidating and dropping it another 50 pips. And again, another example of a breakout pullback, one, two, back against the trade, and then one big candle down sideways inside bar at the numbers at the US Open, 50 pips. So just keep thinking, you know, how is price behaving? There's a difference between this market going one, two, three up and giving a pin hammer for a continuation of that move down versus hitting the stops, hitting the stops, and then reversing. But again, print, your, print off your charts and identify the two or three setups that you recognize. We're not trying to catch every move. We're looking for, you know, when I go into the US session, I look at the pairs and I go, which pairs are extended out at the high or the low? 50 pips out from the London session. And that's the first thing I look at. And then I look at the pattern of the trend. And then I look at how the market behaves in that first hour. So another example of a market uh, that moved up again, uh, first hour, one, two, three, blew through the numbers. So we know we're not finished yet. And then one, two, three, again at the London Open, pin hammer sideways, dropping down and engulfing. The market came back to the numbers. They stop on it high. They hit it one more time and went sideways for dropping it down. And then in that first hour of the US session, dropping it down, giving us an anchor point and then one, two, pin high stop hunt inside bar at the numbers for the continuation of the move back down through the low of the day. Okay, stop hunt high, trapping volume up top, shifting the market, pulling back one more time, catching people who are still chasing the trend for shifting the market for 50 pips. 
And again, another example of a trend trade. I really want to emphasize to people that we're not jumping in front of a freight train. You need to read the price action. So we get into that first hour and the stop hunt is back against the trend. One, two, three down. Then they go into the London session and hit the highs. And then one push, two push, three pushes against the move to the high without taking out the low. And then an inside bar at the end of the 12 candle window for a continuation of the trend up. So again, paying attention to how the market behaves, Asia makes a high and a low and then they extend it out to a new high. Pull it back and extend it out to a new high. That's a trend trade. Breakout, pullback, continuation. One, two, three, stop hunting higher level longs, hitting the stops on shorts who have just got in the market, and then consolidating inside of that, shifting the market, and putting heat into the traders that have just shorted that in the last couple of hours. Gain another example of jamming traders in down low. We had Friday's payrolls high and low. The market stop hunted down to the bottom of the session in Asia, triggering breakout traders, hitting stops on traders that were long, that hadn't taken profit, consolidating, and then giving us an anchor point high and an anchor point low in that first hour. Then hitting the stops up top, giving an engulfment down at the bottom of the range at the London Open, hitting the stops on traders that were long on the pin hammer, pulling back, giving an engulfment, and then one more push in the last candle of the London hour before going sideways and shifting the market. They go sideways, hit the stops, hit the stops, pull back, hit the stops, and then continue the move, hitting the highs of the day. One, two in that first hour of the U.S. session. One big candle back down, so breakout pullback, pin hammer at the U.S. Open for a move back through the highs for 50 plus pips. So again, this same pattern, even though it's up high now, inside of the range, breakout pullback. If it was down low, people would call it a reversal. It's up, it's up high, that's a continuation. But it's a breakout pullback, hit the stops up top, stop hunt down low pin hammer inside bar however it may show up for a continuation of the move back in line with the breakout from the London session. One more example. <clears throat> Market uh, breaks out of the London session, goes back down and stop hunts traders from the Asian breakout. First hour pins and sideways and then an inside bar and a breakout at the US Open back inside of the range. A pullback, traders trying to short that again, following through, thinking that's going to be a measured move down. And then a pin hammer with another pin hammer at the U.S. Open. And then an explosive move, one, two, three to the high for 150 pips from top to bottom. But again, uh, following the existing trending move up, stop hunt low, working the low of the day, hitting the stops, not going anywhere, sideways, pin hammer an explosive move back to the high. And again, just demonstrating like every single day, you can see the next day, we drop down out of the Asian range, they pull it back, they hit it one more time before going one, two, three to stop on traders who were short. In that first hour, again, the first hour of that US session, first hour of the Europe London Open, anchor point low, one, two, three to the high, inside bar at double zeros, at the London Open for the move back down, sideways, breakout, measured move, again our anchor point and our high low, our measured move target for the move back down into the next uh, 50 pip box. So hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. That first hour is critical to pay attention. If you're up high, do they drop it down and then stop hunt high? If you're down low, do they move it up and then stop hunt down low again? Hit the stops trap traders, price action confirmation, usually at numbers, but definitely at the lower, the high of the session for the move of 50 pips or more. Pay attention to that first hour traders. Hopefully you got some value from that. Stay disciplined, stay focused. There's going to be 50 pip moves today. There's already been some this morning. 
Have a great trading session, and may the markets go with you. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.